everybody, I'm Gail Z. Martin, and together with my husband and co-author Larry N. Martin, we write the Spell Salt and Steel series about monster hunter and mechanic Mark Wojcik, who uh, tracks down creepy cryptids in the wilds of Pennsylvania. It is snark and humor and some action, adventure, and some chills and thrills all put together. Uh, Night Moves is the first book in season two, and the brand new Monster Mash has just come out from Falstaff Books. And so I'm gonna share a short reading from Night Moves for you. If you haven't caught up with Mark Wojcik and his crew, you're missing out on something good. So this is Night Moves, which is uh, the uh, first book in season two. Northwestern Pennsylvania, where the men are men and the sheep squatch are deeply respectful, except when they aren't. I slogged through a wooded area near Tamarack Lake, slapping at deer flies, deer flies and gnats and cursing under my breath. I'd had a quiet Friday night in mind, binge watching a few movies, drinking some beer and hanging out with my pet Doberman demon. Then the call came and so here I was, up to my balls and scrub grass, chasing a woolly cryptid through the woods. Unfortunately, nothing about that scenario was the tiniest bit unusual. The red filter on my flashlight hat supposedly made the light harder for my quarry to spot, but I thought it just gave a cheap horror movie effect to the whole thing. I bent down and peered at some fibers caught in a pricker bush. They looked like strands of dirty white wool, which told me I was on the right track. Up ahead, I caught a glimpse of a pale hunched figure and I picked up my pace. I had a modified harpoon gun with a grappling hook tipped shaft attached to a heavy duty rope and a secret weapon about to be deployed as soon as I had a better visual on the creature. And there he was in all his sheepish glory. This particular sheep squatch stood about six feet tall on his hind legs with a coat of matted wool. It had a head like a big horned sheep and a muzzle like a husky dog and a yeti had a mistaken night of passion and birthed the love child. Not to mention the thing smelled like ass. My buddy, Officer Pat Carmody had called me in because the critter had been gnawing on people's landscaping and he was afraid someone would call in the media and we'd have a monster all over TV, which would draw all the wrong kinds of attention things could get ugly. And they definitely could, especially if the sheep squatch was indeed a male, because those things are hung like a squirrel, proportionately, I mean. Not a pretty sight when it stands up naked on its hind feet, not to mention those big horns, and when they butt like a billy goat, someone's going flying. Sheep squatch have a temper and a nasty bite. I checked out the area earlier, trying to be prepared. Not that I ever, not that anything I ever planned went the way it was supposed to, but I figure it's the thought that counts. Hey, ugly, I shouted, and the sheep squatch stopped. I hefted the harpoon gun to my shoulder and shot. The grappling hook shaft sailed through the air and caught like a burr in the creature's thick woolly coat. The other end of the rope was attached to a water ski handle, and I grabbed hold and slung my harpoon gun over one shoulder. At the same time, I could hear the yapping of a border collie, which had been let loose from its kennel and crashed through the scrub towards us. The sheep squatch, squatch stood to its full height and let out a baleful bleat. It turned its beady eyes on me and then swiveled its head toward the collie and took off running. The whole idea behind the harpoon and the grappling hook had been to steer the creature toward the cage that Pat and my other friend, Officer Louis Marino, had helped me set up earlier in the day. Instead, I found myself sheep squatch skiing across the slick grass, skidding and stumbling and trying to keep up. I've got him, I shouted, although it was a toss up over who had whom. The border collie was on the job, nipping at the monster's heels, hedging it in so it lumbered in the right direction. The sheep squatch tried to bolt, and I threw my weight in the opposite direction. At six foot two and about 190, I'm not a little guy, but Sheepy was solid muscle and probably had at least 70 pounds on me. Get the shot, I yelled to Louie as I lost my footing and tumbled along like a tin can on a string behind a just married car. Trank him! At best, I slowed the sheep squatch down a bit. Mostly, I probably just annoyed the fuck out of him as he tried to swat at the place where the hooks were lodged in his fur. Louie fired, but the dart hit the creature in the arm, not the ass. That just pissed Sheepy off and he started to run. The border collie yipped and barked, trying to keep Sheepy headed toward the cage. I stubbornly held onto the grip, skidding on my dupa, and then managing to get on my feet, trying to make sure the creature didn't get away from us. Shoot him again, I yelled. It didn't take. Both Pat and Louie were local cops, but they weren't park rangers, and Rufy and Cryptids wasn't in their job description. I heard two shots, and Sheepy jerked when the darts hit. One was center mass in his chest and the other stuck out, stuck out of his big hairy backside. Sheepy bellowed and swatted at the darts, managing to knock the one in front away, but he couldn't reach his butt. The dog nearly had him to the steel cage filled with yummy treats like clover and slices of bread. Almost on the threshold of the cage, the creature stopped and glared at Louie, who was closest, then took a roundhouse swing at him. 
Sheep Squatch aren't the most graceful creatures, even when they haven't been pumped full of tranquilizers, but this one punched like a drunk. His fist went wide, but Louis stumbled getting out of the way and fell down, landing on the remote for his police cruiser. He hit it just right, setting off the strobe lights and sirens. Sheepy stiffened, bleated, bleated in alarm, and wobbled. I knew he was going down, and I didn't want to have to haul a couple hundred pounds of rank Sheep Squatch ass into the cage, so I plowed into him from behind. He fell forward into the cage and didn't move. The border collie ran up, wagging his tail, taking credit for the whole thing. Does that count as sheep tipping, Louie asked? So that's an excerpt from Night Moves, which is the uh, first in the se season two, Spell, Salt, and Steel. And please look for the brand new one, Monster Mash, from Falstaff Books on Amazon. I'll be back with more. See you soon.